All right, it is time for another Blue Ocean spec video. For those folks that are not familiar with the term Blue Ocean, essentially what I'm talking about are cool books. These are books that people are not paying attention to because they're not on a hot list. Folks are not really creating videos about these books saying X number of copies sold last week, so therefore you might want to check it out. These are books that people are not paying attention to, partly because they're also not contained in Key Collector app, which is a wonderful app that puts a spotlight on a lot of books. And as wonderful as that app is, it doesn't contain every single book out there that may have something significant or important attached to it. So in this video, what we attempt to do are to highlight those books that aren't contained in Key Collector app, books that you potentially have in your collection or might even be able to find in a dollar bin. Now what's great is that each one of these books has something special going for it. And that's part of what I'll try to surface in this video. And we will look at three books that you you may want to be on the lookout for again, potentially in your collection or in the dollar bin if you're out there hunting. One thing I will ask you to do is to check out the sponsor of this video after you watch this video. The sponsor is Hip Comic. And if you are not familiar with Hip Comic, I encourage you to familiarize yourself with this platform. It is a website that is built for collectors by collectors. They have auctions that start at 99 cents for really awesome books every single week, as well as books you can just pick up right now from local comic shops and sellers all across the country. There is a link in the description. I encourage you to check them out again after you watch the video. Stay tuned. The first book that I want to highlight is Giant Size Fantastic Four, issue number six, published by Marvel Comics in 1975. This book is a reprint, a Bronze Age reprint of Fantastic Four annual issue number six, released in 1968. Fantastic Four Annual Issue Number 6 is the first appearance of Annihilus, as well as a baby that turns out to be Franklin Richards, the son of Mr. Fantastic and Invisible Woman, and also the most powerful mutant in all of Marvel Comics. Both Annihilus and Franklin Richards are the subject of a lot of speculation. There are a lot of folks out there that believe that these two characters will make an appearance in the MCU at some point. That factor, combined with the fact that there are less than 2,000 copies of this book on the CGC census, are two of the reasons why we are seeing a price increase for this comic. And this is why Giant Size Fantastic Four issue number six is on the list. It's a great cheap alternative. Now consider this, Giant Size Fantastic Four issue number six has a raw average sales price of just $5.88 with a high raw sale of $40. And at this point, there is no graded sales data available. Now compare that to Fantastic Four annual issue number six, the original. That book will set you back over $400 for a nice raw copy and tens to tens of thousands of dollars for a graded copy. A 9.8 CGC copy recently sold for more than $33,000. Night and day difference between these two books, but again, if you're getting priced out of the original, the reprint is not a bad way to go, especially for the price of $5.88. I mean, that's not a ton of money in any way, shape, or form. Book number two is Teen Titans Spotlight, issue number 14, published by DC Comics in 1987. We have done a healthy amount of research on this book. So I want you to take this one with a grain of salt because we believe this to be true, but we might need some extra help on this one. But this book might be 
the first solo story featuring Nightwing. And again, there's not a ton of information out there, but we believe this to be true. In addition to being the first solo story featuring Dick Grayson as Nightwing, this book also marks the first time that Dick Grayson joins up with Batman as his new alter ego. Dick Grayson, the first Robin, is an important DC character and his change from Robin to Nightwing was a significant step in him growing up from a former sidekick to being his own character. Nightwing was the brainchild of Marv Wolfman and George Perez, and his first appearance in Tales of the Teen Titans issue number 44 is a true Copper Age, or Bronze Age, depending upon your point of view, key. I will tell you that Nightwing is one of my personal favorites when it comes to the Titan show on HBO Max. I enjoy watching this character, how he acts, but then also the action scenes that he's involved in. And there are a lot of people that believe that this character will appear in a movie at some point down the road. So again, this is not a bad book to be on the lookout for if it turns out to be his first solo story. So if you're a Nightwing fan looking for under the radar keys, his first solo story might be something that you want to be on the lookout for. This book is so under the radar that there is presently no FMV for either raw books or graded copies. But when you dig into the data, essentially what you see is that the most recent raw copy went for about $8, which is not a bad price. Again, you can probably find this book in dollar bins. The last 9.8 sale for this book actually occurred in 2019, and that book sold for $26. Book number three is Pirates of the Caribbean issue number one published by Joe Comics in 2016. And no, we are not going to make any Amber Heard jokes of any kind in this video. It is all about Jack Sparrow. Now, what makes this book really cool is that Pirates of the Caribbean issue number one is the first standard U.S. comic book appearance of Captain Jack Sparrow, the classic Disney character played by Johnny Depp. It should be noted that there were earlier comic book adaptions of the Pirates movie franchise that predate this comic. However, those were not published in standard comic book format. They were printed as smaller children's 6x9 inch trades. This comic, the one that we're talking about, Pirates of the Caribbean issue number one, was not sold at the Disney theme parks like the other trades. And potentially, they were not sold because of all of the public accusations that were swirling about regarding Johnny Depp that were brought to light by his former wife, Amber Heard. It's hard to know whether we're ever going to see Johnny Depp reprise his role as Captain Jack Sparrow. Only time will tell whether we see that happen or if we see someone else pick up the mantle later on down the line. I think that anything is possible and again, only time will tell. The other thing that I want to point out here is that the first comic book appearance of Captain Jack Sparrow had a relatively small number of sales here in the U.S. According to Comicron, there were only 5,856 total copies sold. Again, not necessarily a bad thing. A first appearance, a relatively low number of comics sold, and the price isn't bad. To that point, copies of this book, Raw, sell for about $3.77, with a 9.8 having an FMV of $56.95. With that said, we are going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch. I hope that you enjoyed this recent installment of the Blue Ocean Spec Books. Again, I want to acknowledge the sponsor of this video. If you guys have not checked out Hip Comic, I encourage you to do so. They have a great website with more than 1 million comics waiting for you link down in the description. Check them out. And if you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care.